Okay guys, what we're going to do is take this out now. And get ready to set up for the, um, the second side. chuck. This is the first time I've used it. It's a decent chuck, it's a Pratt and Bernard um, and I stripped it completely, it came with a lathe, stripped it right down, cleaned it all up and rebuilt it. But what I don't know is, what I, what I need to do now is ensure parallelism um, with the with the portion that I've already turned so what I'm going to do because I'm going to be gripping on this same set of jaws here on the outsides and I've I've cut myself four um, aluminium packing pieces what I'm going to do is grip on the inner set of jaws so I'm just going to find a bit of bar stock or something that that I can grip on this inner set and it doesn't matter that it's running concentric or not, I'm not interested in that. But then what I'm going to do, once it's under, once the jaws are under pressure gripping, I'm going to bring a clock in and clock these back faces of the jaws, just to try and understand how, how well they're running on the chuck, to see whether there's any, um, you know, axial um, run out of the chuck or the jaws. If there is, I'm going to mark the jaws up and we'll pack the jaws out accordingly based on what sort of run out I've got so that then I can ensure when I do load the part up it should be running absolutely true and we'll double check that when we get to that point. So I'll just go and find a bit of bar stock and I'll bring you back when we're doing the clock check. Okay so here's the setup. We've got the clock mounted on the on the new carriage stop and um, we've clamped a piece of round bar in the chuck and tightened it up as tight as we're expecting to tighten up the actual physical part so hopefully the stresses on the jaws should be roughly the same um, and we've got the clock on with the lightest touch on the clock and zeroed it out so we're just going to have a look at that now and I'll zoom you in I don't know whether you're going to be able to see the clock or not or whether it's going to be blown out of the light I think you can see that okay okay so let's have a look so we zero on that jaw absolutely zero on that jaw minus two that's minus 20 microns on that jaw minus 20 zero zero so we've got two jaws with minus 20 on so I'm going to get two bits of 20 micron shim and we'll put those behind these two jaws I'm just going to get a marker pen and mark those two jaws up now and then hopefully when we put the part in we should be as close to zero as possible but we will check that so this is where you get to have a giggle at me needing about 10 pairs of hands so I've got some 20 micron shim we're just going to put Sorry, did I? yeah, 20 micron shim this is. So we're just going to put the thinnest smear of oil on there. And I've got my two jaws marked. We're just going to stick the shim on to the jaw. Same with this one. There comes the fun and games with the uh, with the ten pairs of hands needed. So I put my aluminium packing pieces in one by one.
just going to lightly nip these just to deform, just to deform those packers by enough. Okay, so before we um, before we crack on and clock this circumferentially, which I'll use the um, the central bore as the datum for that, I'm going to find a way of checking this back face now. So we've got it nipped. We've gently tapped it back with a soft hammer. So this should be registering on all four of those jaws, including the two with the bit of 20, 20 um, micron shim. So I just I want to double check my workings before I go too mad and start nipping this up and clocking it in. So I'll find a way of doing that and I'll bring you back when, when I've got a solution to it. So we've got a solution guys, we've got the um we've got a a lever clock set up just on scribing block, again sat on the what's become an increasingly useful carriage stop and this is gonna look frightening on the scale. Um this clock is graduated in half tenth divisions so and what I'm doing is I'm clocking on this face here which was turned at the same exactly the same time as the datum face so I know they're parallel I'm trying to look down the camera and do this at the same time but I'll just rotate it it looks bad but look. So we're going from no five ten twelve. We're going from twelve twelve tenths of a thou at, at the worst at that side to down there, which is the worst, which is twenty. So we're ranging between twelve and twenty on there. So that's a total of eight tenths of a thou movement. Gives me twenty microns. Okay guys, we've done a bit more um, sort of jiggling around with this and I've not changed, the shims are the same. All I've done is made sure, I've just given it another tap with the soft hammer. So I've got about a tenth and a half of movement there, which is, um, what's that, two and a half microns per tenth. So we're about three to four microns run out on that face. That was turned at the same time as the datum face. So I know the datum face is also running the same and that's at the extreme of diameter. So it's only going to get better the closer to centre you get. So I'm, you know, that's a third of the tolerance on the drawing. The tolerance on the drawing allows me 13 microns parallelism, and I'm at about three or four, so it's well in. What I need to do now is set it radially, and I know that the axial will move when I do that. So we're going to get the, uh, but I know I can achieve the axial now. So we're now going to get the radial right, and once we've got that right, we'll come back and recheck the axial, tweak it if we need to. And we'll keep going backwards and forwards until we've got them both within spec. And at that point, we'll nip the chuck up and crack on with the uh, the rest of the turning. All right, guys. I thought I'd use the same setup and the same clock because it's about the most um, sensitive clock that I've got, um, being half a tenth uh, graduations on it. So that's the setup. There we go. So this hasn't taken too long. Uh, really, but if I spin the chuck now, I've got about one graduation there or less. So that bore's running within half a tenth of a thou, which is um, what's that in microns? That's um, that's about one and a quarter microns, something like that. Well, I think that's good enough for a home shot. Um, if I just zoom out a tiny bit, and then what I'll do is just wind the clock in through the ball. 
as far as I can until the clock's going to hit. So we're halfway through the bore there and back out again. And there's there's no movement. So I know I'm square, which I should be, based on the axial uh, run out. And we'll just do that now. So I'll just reset up for the axial. So there you go, we're about two or three tenths of a thou that way, which is, um, what's that, five, seven microns total at, at, at its very worst, about seven microns and my tolerance is 13, parallelism wise, so happy with that, that's all set up, we're all tight, good to go, I'll bring you back now, we'll get some tools set up and we'll start machining the front side ok guys we're all set up um, in the chuck now happy with the with the readings so we're just going to face this off uh, take a measurement once we've cleaned it up and then face it to um, I'm going to go not finish thickness I'm going to go finish thickness plus two millimeters and that gives me a bit of material to play with for the register that I've got to turn to get my diameter right and then I can face the front piece off when I'm done and I'll explain more about that when we get to that point. I need to finish up at 18 plus 2.15 so that's 20.15 plus 2 mil spare is 22.15 roughly and we're 20 Okay, I'm to my rough thickness, so I've got two mil extra on this front face. I've just used a Sharpie marker to put a, a rough diameter and that's much bigger than what I need. And I'm just going to use that to work to now to take this face down to almost finished thickness. I'll probably leave a quarter of a millimetre on it, something like that on the overall width, just to rough this next piece out. So we'll do that now. Just check that. Yep, my 
looks good. There's a tiny bit of stuff left on that face for finishing and we'll do that with the tool that we turn this um, register diameter with. So I'll go and get some tooling set up for that and we'll bring you back when we're doing that bit. So guys the next operation now is to turn the register diameter on here. Um, the drawing calls for it to be 2.15 millimeters long. Obviously this is longer than that. I've left some material on the front just to give me something to work with for sizing. Um, but it shows a sharp corner and it, that's almost impossible to do turning. Um, so I've done the best I can and I've got um, a tool and I'll just show you that now. Um, so I'll just reposition the camera and bring you back and show you the tool that I've ground up to use for that. Okay, so this is the tool we've used, we're going to use. Um, it's it's an old, anybody who's been around the block as much as I have will recognise the name Stag Major. So it's an old Stag Major um, piece of high speed steel blank. So I've ground that with a, a very um, shallow angle of clearance on all three sides trying to give the point as much strength as possible. And then what I've done is just lightly stoned all the edges and lightly stoned the smallest radius right on the corner um, just to try and give it a bit of strength so that the, hopefully the corner doesn't break down and you'll see what I've also done is I've used the radius of the wheel to try and support the tip as much as possible to try and get the sharpest corner so we'll try that if that's failing um, we will I'll get back onto the um, to, to Derek and, and I'll ask him whether we can go for an undercut in the face um, which would be the way I would have kind of designed it I think so that you, you, you undercut the face right into that corner which allows you then to use a, a, a radius you know a tool with a radius on to, to turn the diameter. So we'll give it a bash with this and see how we get on it's only mild steel so as long as I go steady uh, I think this will be okay so we'll give that a shot uh, I'll bring you back when we're doing some of that. So I've set the carriage stop up guys so that I'm just clear of the face here um, and we'll just gently pick away at this until we've cleaned off the bevel and then we'll get a measurement on diameter and then we'll work our way into finish size. Eighty-six point two, and we're heading for seventy-seven point something. I'm just going to get the drawing back up, and I'll come back when we when we know what size we're working to. So I'm all set up for that finished pass now on this. Um, so I've I've measured done a few measure cuts. I've been taking half a mil depth of cut, and it's pretty consistent. I'm getting a you know reasonable surface finish. So what I've done is I've dialed in my finish cut for the diameter and I've also touched off this face, measured the thickness of the, the finished thick width of this and I've dialed in on my compound slide the finished thickness that I need to go to to finish this face. So we're going we're gonna to plunge all the way in and then we're just going to traverse out hopefully uh, if Swarf doesn't uh, stop us and hopefully finish the diameter and the face all in one all in one go to finish sizes.
So if you've ever wondered how they make wire wool, they use one of those tools. So hopefully that is the turning pretty much finished on this now, um, in terms of finished sizes at least. So we'll just give that a check. Let's give that a wipe as swarf kicking about, we'll clean that up. So we're heading for 77.27 plus or minus 03. And that was measuring 77.28, which is plus 01. Yeah, 77.28. So that's, that's as good on finish size on diameter. And this way, this should be 18 millimetres. Just check that. Seventeen point nine nine. So we're within 0.01 on diameter and on finish thickness. surface finish so I'm happy with that so what we need to do now is just finish this front face off now to get rid of the excess material to make this drop right to the to the finished face here and what I'm going to use for that is probably the 45 degree tool again to get rid of this material uh, so we'll load that up we'll touch off this face we'll wind off by the 2.15 millimeters that I need and set my zero and then we'll machine down to that zero off this face and then while the 45 tools in, we'll break the edge, break the edge, and then I just need to countersink to break the edge in the middle, and then that'll be it for the turning on this part. There we are guys, that's um, that's the job complete from a turning perspective. So now what we need to do is load that up onto the mill and we've got some the weight reduction cutouts to do on the rotary table which has now arrived from eBay. I've not took it out of the box yet so um, that's the next job really. And then some holes to drill, two patterns of holes to drill for the um, for the hold down holes and that completes the, the adapter so that will probably be it for the first episode um, I'll mash all that together into a video and see see where we're at but hopefully I can get all that into one episode and then we'll do the next episode as we move on to the mill so thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode when we're when we're taking the, the 
as the sort of milling uh, weight reduction stops out.